folks, I'm Shannon, UVC Power Sports, right here in Palm Springs, California at the 2020 Kawasaki Dealer Meeting, your world, your adventure, and the big, huge debut of the new Kawasaki KRX 1000. Our dear friend, Kevin Mann, he is the product manager for Kawasaki, and how long have you been with Kawasaki? Uh, five years now, yeah. Five years? It seems like it's been longer than that. Yeah. Well, like I've known you forever. <laughs> time goes fast when you're oh, having fun, I know, right? it does. Yeah. Fun, fun is yeah. what Kawasaki's all about too, folks. We are going to, uh, Kevin's going to show us and talk to us all about the brand new KRX 1000. And I'm going to give it to you, Kevin, so you can just give us all the Super. Well, thank you for that, Shannon. And uh, uh, first of all, we'll just talk a little bit about the, the new Terex KRX 1000. There's basically two uh, color graphics. So we have the Kawasaki Lime Green model, but we also have the, uh, uh, the, the white model with the black metallic flake. Uh, so they're available in two different colors. And uh, one of the things that Kawasaki did when we uh, first uh, put this uh, product together is we, we really reached out to customers and we found out what opportunities that they really want in a product and aren't being satisfied for. So, and that basically translated into three C's and we call it three C's is, is capability. They wanted more capability out of the vehicle. They also wanted more confidence. There was a lot of situations where the current product that was out there is just not making them feel like they want to feel. And, uh, and then finally, they wanted more comfort. So these uh, people ride in these all day long and they wanna come back and, and not be bounced around. They wanna basically have an enjoyable experience. So those are the three C's we're gonna talk about. But also, as you know, Kawasaki makes things very strong. And so we have the added advantage of having the toughness built into our products. And that will come out as well when we start talking about the KRX 1000. So, if I may start, I'll start with styling. So the styling of this model, it's very capable styling, it's tough and it's sleek. And so by that I mean we don't have big body panels, we, we have a very sleek design, it's a very angular design, it's also very open. You can see how large these fenders are. You can see the massiveness of the A-arms, the, the, the size and magnitude of the shock, the Fox Podium 2.5 shocks, they're, they're massive. So that kind of gives the, the sense of capability. The angulation gives a sense of the sleekness and, uh, and the toughness is basically in some of the size of the components. One of the things that pay attention to as I go through the discussion is you can see the, the thickness of the components, the amount of steel we put under the carriage, the amount of uh, shape, the way things are shaped to give more clearance and more protection. All those things are little things, but they all add up for better durability and more confidence on the trails. So with that, we can uh, go into the into the vehicle. So the main the main aspects of this vehicle, it's a 999 Kawasaki, all Kawasaki parallel twin engine. Uh, it's got amazing torque uh, uh, balance. So uh, unlike some models that may have uh, a high end torque and no low end torque, this this model has great torque at the low end, but it also has great high revving capability as well. So it's a very well balanced engine, and it's a great torque feeling engine. One of the biggest things we have on this is we have a CVT. Nobody on the market really does a nice smooth acceleration, new, a smooth power engagement with a confident, durable transmission. What Kawasaki has done with this is have a large belt CVT transmission with a centrifugal clutch. So we use that clutch to basically engage the torque, but that belt is always tight. Unlike some competitive models, they use the shivs to grab the belt and that adds to wear and, and durability uh, on the belt. We, our belt is always tight and we have a, a, a separate member, the centrifugal clutch, to do that power engagement. That's a distinct advantage. People want to drive. Remember we talked about comfort. They want to drive. They don't want to worry about shifting gears on a, tr on a, on a direct drive transmission. They, they just basically want to drive and have the transmission do what it's supposed to do. And that's what this vehicle does. So that's a little bit about the engine and the transmission. Then the other factor we talked about was the capability and the confidence. You see what the footprint of this vehicle, it's, it's got a very long wheelbase. It's 99 inch wheelbase. And it's also very, the wheels are pushed to the outer corners of the vehicle. The reason for that is because we wanted to maximize straight line stability and handling. So that wide footprint gives us that, that excellent handling and, and the long wheelbase gives the comfort and as well the confidence going up the hills and down the hills. You're, you're much more rooted to the ground. In addition to the, the footprint, we have large tires. We have 31 inch Maxxis uh, carnivore tires. They're eight ply tire as standard equipment with 15 inch wheels and bead locks. 
so that's something that usually you would see from an aftermarket uh, being added to it, but at, us as an OEM is putting this on standard. And the reason for that is it gives us that 14.4 inches of ground clearance. So we have exceptional ground clearance right off the start with this vehicle. So the bigger tire also allows you to roll over those, those rocks without getting in the ruts. It allows you to go over the ruts, whereas say a 29 inch tire doesn't really, it, it, it lets you get in it more. It makes it a much rougher ride. And it's just an all around better tire having the 31 inch tire standard. So on the suspension on this vehicle, we've got A-arm front suspension and rear trailing arm suspension. And when we talk about the styling, we, we mentioned how open this is. We want you to see the capability. It's got 19 inches of travel on the front with the Fox Podium 2.5 uh, uh, shock. It's got a 24 point adjustment. So I'll just show you in compression damping. So we, we can lift the hood off here. And underneath the hood, we have uh, uh, the 24 compression damping adjustment right there, very easy. We also have the uh, uh, brake master cylinder and we have the radiator. Very large radiator in this machine. Obviously, if you have a lot of power, we have, I think it's around 77 foot-pounds of torque on this machine. So it's, uh, it's got a lot of uh, uh, torque to, uh, oh, sorry. It's got a lot of torque to put to the ground and, and you need the large cooling to do that. Uh, before I continue on to the uh, suspension, I just want to show you a really cool wow. thing. Toolless. You see how simple that was to take out. This is a really tough grill, by the way, uh, but you can take it out and blow it clean if you're on a dusty trail or if you get back to the shop, you can easily uh, pressure wash it and get all that uh, grit that's in there out. Okay, so then uh, just while I'm on the front, I'm just going to hit the headlights. Uh, we, unfortunately, these are show units and we have them batteries disconnected, but if I had the key on and I'm running, You'll have a nice little LED light. It's an accent light. Has a really cool, mean, sleek, tough look to it. We tried to space the headlights out far to give that really wide, confident kind of look to the vehicle. So I think these are all things that you're gonna feel. As we go down to the suspension, we talked about the 14.4 inches of ground clearance, and we also gave you good quality ground clearance. We take the A-arms and we arch the A-arms. Usually that's what an aftermarket does, but we do this standard equipment on this unit. Uh, so they're not only are they really beefy, but they're arched to give you maximum clearance for the for the breadth of the uh, the width of the vehicle. Also, the upper A arm, you can see it's not just a, a tube that has a, a a flange on the end. It's actually it has a forged steel boss on the end, and it's shaped kind of funky. So the the A arm slopes down and it and it curls in. And this piece right here is all a steel forged boss. And the reason we did that is A, we wanted something very strong in that area, but B, by, by shaping it like this, we've allowed this almost like two inches plus more travel on the shock. And you all know the longer the travel on the shock, the more comfort and, and performance you can get out of the suspension. So that's, that's an important design element that some of the competition does not have. We also have larger shafts on this, both the drive shafts and the end shafts. Uh, are very high torque, so uh, I know they're higher than some of the competitive models, uh, but you know that's Kawasaki quality. We see that in a lot of products we have. So that's the front suspension. Um, in terms of the preload, you can see here there's an adjustable collar at the top of this. These are dual spring, so you have uh, the upper spring that's going to absorb the uh, smaller bumps, and then when you get into the really rough terrain, the, the lower spring really takes effect there. So. This it can set the preload and there's a lots of adjustments. There's an inter internal collar here. You can uh, thread that to, to change the dynamic of the ride. As we make our way to the back, I'm going to stay on the chassis since I'm talking about it, but you can see the boat shape of the bottom of the, of the vehicle. So this is, uh, customers told us they don't want to get hung up on rocks. So as this tire goes over a large rock, all this area is open. It's allowing that rock to come off the tire without getting hung up. So it, you know, we have the high ground clearance, but this is added clearance to give us in those tight situations. We also have, uh, we pay a lot of uh, attention to making this uh, a confidence uh, when you're riding. You don't want sticks and stuff coming through your vehicle. You want that protection for the occupant. We have steel panels in the fenders and the whole undercarriage, the whole bathtub underneath the uh, operator area is all steel plate. So we, we give you that protection. As you come to the back, you see we have rear trailing arms. So in these arms, they're very long arms for one. As I said, we have 99 inch wheelbase. 
but they're also shaped with an arch in it. So they come back straight and they allow maximum clearance in this area. And then of course we have to come down and join to the wheel, but we've maximized the clearance as much as we can to, to make that more, uh, more enjoyable riding without getting hung up. You can see the massiveness of these shocks. Uh, again, they're Fox 2.5 uh, podium shocks. And uh, we've got 21 inches of travel on this. And the adjustment on this one is just right in here, very easy to get at. And here's your collar we talked about for your preload, right here. So what we have with this, our suspension that makes us unique, is we have a four-link trailing arm suspension. So we all know as we go on, on a straight line down some whoopy terrain, that the vehicle has a tendency to drift left and right. Well, what the four-link suspension does, and here's the fourth link. So we have our two rear trailing arm uh, links, and then we have our front link here. This is the link that's most important for Kawasaki in terms of a differentiator. That helps us control the toe wind. So that's basically trying to keep this tire straighter or where it needs to be as it goes up and down in its, uh, in its compression and, and extension. So if you're going down, the, the benefit to the customer, if I'm going down that straight road, at, at higher speed and it's got a whoopee road to it a competitive model you're going to feel it drift left and right a lot more because it doesn't hold the toe in and what we do is we control that toe in to hold straighter line for stability we also you'll feel this also when, when i'm in a turn and i start going in a hard turn wherever my steering's pointing this vehicle has a tendency to follow that straight line it doesn't oversteer or un understeer like some of the competitive models Another nice feature we have is we have a stabilizer, um, both in the front and the rear. I can show you, uh, here's, the, here's the rear stabilizer. So that, it, that provides additional cornering stability. And we just go to the front, I can show you the front stabilizer. Some companies or some brands out there don't even put a front stabilizer on their uh, A-arm suspension. So we want to make this, uh, remember we talked about confidence, that's adding more confidence when you're driving the machine. Okay, so I think uh, we've talked a little bit about the uh, suspension. From the back, you can see the magnitude and the size of these A-arms, or these uh, rear, rear trailing link arms. Uh, this is like 38 millimeter diameter. This is a really stout rod. Again, aftermarket is at that level, and you don't need to upgrade this with aftermarket because it's already there. Okay, I'm gonna let's go inside the cabin and talk about some of the comfort features. So, outside, we have... Uh, we have doors, uh, so Scott, I, just to point out, we've got a, a door, you got a door latch outside here, maybe better on this side, yeah. I think. Uh, so an outside door, you can see how high this door comes up and how the door shape actually comes out like this. That's to give the occupant a little bit more space. So an in, outside latch, but we also have an inside latch. And not many companies do this. It's really easy when you're in it. You don't have to look for how to get out, and you don't have to look for how to get in. Plus, like, when you have a ca uh, cab enclosure, you don't. You're able to get out. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have soft doors, which I don't think yeah. we talked about over there, but yeah. we have soft doors. So the other nice feature here is it's a full half door. I, mm -hmm. I know that sounds kind of contradictory, but all the door is covered, and all the way up to your shoulder at the back. So you're we protected. Are, we are protected. We don't have a partial door, mm -hmm. and. So we also have an armrest on this door as well. So it's a nice oh, little fun. comfort feature. Oh, yeah. You probably used it when you were driving it not, yesterday. Probably not realizing yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. And then also you can see here there's a speaker uh, cutout. So where if you go to the accessory speaker uh, kit, that'll fit in the door. So as, as I look in here, look at how open it is, how easy it is to climb into the vehicle. Again, this is 14.4 inches ground clearance, but look at how easy it is for me to climb in this vehicle. And look oh, at the yeah. space, I'm 5'10" but we've had guys in this six foot five over the last couple days and they feel very comfortable in this. So plus for the short people, you've got it. You can show them how you can do the seat all the way up and down. Okay. Yeah. So you so, are, have a position. We there. have a lot of even little like tall guys and short yeah. women. So, so this, that's huge. This travel yeah. is six inches long. So yeah. you've got much more upward uh, ability and much more backward ability than, than say some competitive models out there. So I can go all the way back here. That's my full six inches of travel. Both the passenger seat and the driver's seat have that feature. And you look in here at my leg room, I've got lots of leg room yeah, in here. See how wide it is here? Again, this vehicle is 64 inches wide, or 68 inches wide. 
the tread centers I believe are are in the 50 high high 50s wide tread center and tread center that's the stability but having a wider vehicle allows you that more comfort inside the cabin so we also have this foothold you see that so when you were driving yesterday Shannon I bet you you felt going over that bump you want it to be rooted in the seat not slipping around when I put my foot there I am locked into the seat of course we have our seat belts on but uh, certainly that extra pressure gives you that confidence and that feeling that I can do this and I'm safe, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a nice feature. Yeah, that's interesting you say that because when we did a demo ride the other day, it's the first time ever I did that and right. to drive the, that kind of terrain. Yeah. But now that we're going back, now I'm going to see all the things that we've talked right. about and now I'm really going to think about because awesome. I probably didn't even realize I was doing stuff I didn't that's even know right. I was doing. That's right. And so the passenger has yeah. one too. We can show you uh, when we open the passenger door. But it's, it's that foothold there, so it's yeah. it's that stability. And I noticed this too. Also, is the um, length you have adjustable length on that too? Yeah. I think? So this is yeah. a a, a, yeah, a grab handle for the passenger. It's got multiple settings. You just open the glove box and mm -hmm. can slide that. Yeah. So you got short people versus tall people there. Right. Too. So so when I'm in here, the seat belts it comes standard with three point seat belts, but it has this anti cinch strap, so it doesn't really hurt your shoulder. It provides a lot of cushion there. And the unit basically won't go over 10 or 15 miles an hour without the seatbelt on and your park brake off. So that's a, a safety uh, Rova standard. Uh, and also we have an optional six-point harness which also ties into the same vehicle function. So with that inside the cabin, now we're sitting here. Let's talk about some of the comfort features. You see we have fully infinitely variable tilt steering. You wow. see that range of tilt? So the nice thing about this infinitely variable, you don't have clicks to worry about. Mm -hmm. Wherever you set it is where you want it. If it's not in the right setting, like a click, 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 you know, you want maybe intermittent, you can't do that. On this, you can set it wherever you want. And you notice the dash uh, display. Actually, it's an LCD display. It rotates with the steering. So if I'm a short person, I'm down here, oh, I can see cool. it very yeah. easy. And if I'm tall, I put yeah. it up here and I can see it. So. And so while we're on the display, this is a 23 function display. It's got uh, a, a tachometer, it's got your gear position. It's got pretty much everything you're gonna need to know about your vehicle. One of the things it really has that's nice is a voltmeter. So if you have a lot of accessories on this and you're worried about the battery, this will show you the voltage level. You know, Scott, if it drops below the 12.5 or whatever, you, you tell your customer, well, you better head back or turn the accessories off and, and let it charge up mm -hmm. a bit. We also have a temperature warning light. I think it's a it's a warning light to let you know your belt it may be getting to a point where it needs attention. So it'll tell you to hey, you maybe maybe you're driving in high at a lot of low speed, uh, high torque situation, and that's putting a lot of load on a belt. It's making it hot. It'll tell you that hey, you need to back off and, and correct that situation or go visit your your dealer. So really nice display on this. Uh, we have uh, also we have a three-speed transmission we have high we have low and we have reverse so the nice thing about this similar to some of our other vehicles is we actually a lot of times you're driving and I don't know if you did this the other day but you want to go backwards and then you want to get back going forwards and most people drive in high all day long but so to do that it's really easy I can go back and forwards and I can do it fairly quickly because it's end-to-end and most people don't know most OEMs don't put their their forward and reverse like that yeah that is good so we also have uh, an independent park brake unlike some of the ones that have the park in the transmission if I'm parked on a slope and that's how I have to stop the vehicle I can ratchet yeah, this brake much, on much better. I hate and, when it doesn't have that because it gets you really nervous right so yeah. you, you can unlock this on the slope there's no torque wind up on the vehicle whereas if you had the park one you kind of have to bounce it to get it out out of park and into gear so very nice transmission in this. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but next time when you go out into the field, uh, take some, some video of that transmission. It is solid. It is The gears on it are massive. It's something more than I ever expected we'd have. So this transmission is just bulletproof. With it, with One thing I noticed, I've never seen, done it before, is this put it in low here. Okay. So let's talk about that. Okay. Because that, that's something new, new to me that I haven't right. seen. Right. You get to the other side. That and the, of course, the diff lock. Is the diff lock any different than a normal diff lock? Yeah, I, I'm going to yeah. tell you all about the four wheel drive system. Okay. It, it's really, you know, I, I talked about earlier, there's customers that say they want to be able to do things. So they, a good example, you see a mud pile up there and you're driving around and you got, you realize that if it's not in four wheel drive and diff lock, you're not going to make it through that mud pile. What are you going to do? You know, you're not in four wheel drive, you have to stop, you have to put it in four wheel drive. Well, we've changed that. On this vehicle, this is two wheel drive here. 
this is four wheel drive and this is four wheel drive diff lock but as i'm going 50 miles an hour look looking at the mud i can actually turn this into four wheel or four wheel diff lock and as long as the speeds of the wheels are all turning it will engage the four wheel on the fly that's a that's an awesome feature so now when i hit that mud i'm not going to get stuck i'm just going to sail through it and get to my next trail so you're in four-wheel drive you just automatically while you're driving just while you're shift driving it shift it as okay. long as if i'm already stuck and in the mud and my wheels are spinning the back wheels aren't and the front wheels the back wheels are spinning and the front wheels aren't it won't engage you're going to have to stop and get all the wheels to go the same speed oh, okay. but if i'm driving all wheels are spinning the same speed i'm not stuck yet right then i flick it it'll gauge the four wheel oh, okay. and the dip lock yeah so it's a smart system, it understands that. The other nice thing is our EPS steering. So a lot of vehicles you drive, the, if in two wheel drive, it's very easy steering, right? Mm -hmm. And when I go to four wheel drive, because that's a drive axle now, it's much harder to turn, right? But this vehicle has two settings on its EPS. So you won't feel a difference when you're in two or four. It's gonna feel easy in both of them to turn the vehicle. So we, we added extra extra pressure into, this, into the EPS system when you're in four wheel drive. Very cool feature, and diff lock's gonna be hard to steer by the nature, the, the front wheels are in diff lock. So it's just, you, you're doing that for maximum traction. That's that's usually the scenario. So, now we're getting to the button you asked about, uh, Shannon. So you're coming into that rock, that, that big rock you wanna climb over, and what you wanna do is probably put it into four wheel diff lock or four wheel, and you're a little frightened because that's a big rock you're climbing. You're gonna put the tires on the rock and, and try to get up that hill. I'm gonna go into low, but as I go, I still am at full power. So what can happen is that it's hard to control the full power with just your accelerator on the foot. So I wanna, I wanna actually make it so I can make it so precise that I can inch the vehicle up over that rock. So I'm gonna push this button. It's gonna reduce the power to 57% of full power, and it's gonna make this accelerator pedal very featherable to ease. So as I push the pedal, there's no jerkiness. It's just a nice, easy, smooth crawl over that rock and that tough spot. And now I'm over that tough spot. Boom, I'm going back into full power and I'm gonna have some fun. Back in the hot. And doing that is almost like it drives itself almost. It's almost felt like when I was doing the rock thing. Yeah. I so, was like, yeah, I was just holding the steering wheel. Of course, I was like clenching it really yeah. hard because I've never done that before. But it would just went right through it. So if you if you did it, not, usually mm -hmm. when you do rock crawling, you want to go slow. You want to mm -hmm. really work the rock. Yeah. You don't want to speed through it. I know right. some people have that tendency, but that's going to break your vehicle over time. Yeah. So most jeepers and rock crawlers, they're they're usually feathering over the tough stuff. You try that in high, and you get on the rock, and it's like boom, <laughs> boom. And you're going to edge yeah. up and you may slip and you just don't have precise control of the throttle. So if I go into low, that'll give you precise control. Does that make sense? Yeah, and when we were doing the demo ride, the, the guy was telling us what to do when we were doing it. So yeah. we did all that. So that was, again, when we go back and do the demo ride again, it's yeah. just gonna, I'm going to understand Take, it Try, a lot try to do it in both. Yeah. When you go over that rock, try to go nice and slow and just feel the chassis absorb the bumps. Uh -huh. You know, when I'm jeeping, that's what I want to do. You don't bolt through the, the tough spot. It's really just hard on the chassis. It can do it, no problem. It'll do it, but you'll just fail stuff faster. So most people that put, you know, $20,000 in investment, they, they don't want to have that. No, right. Yeah. So it's got six cup hold, or five cup holders, two here, two in between the seats, and then there's one also on the passenger door. Scott, you can open that if you want. Again, there's that foothold for the passenger. Uh, we talked a bit about the, uh, the, the four-point trailing arm suspension, but what we didn't point out, it's really beefy, and it's basically beefy from the factory, so the customer uh, has much less need now to, uh, to put on aftermarket parts to bring it up to this level. That when they're buying this machine, as opposed to some of the competitors out there, they already have that added strength built in. But one of the things about our, our uh, trailing arm links is you can see how they're shaped again. We're trying to maximize the, uh, the clearance underneath so you can get uh, over that uh, difficult terrain without uh, causing damage to your machine. So if you, you take the, the, the camera, Scott, and you look down the whole body of the machine, you can see the 14.4 the inches of, of ground clearance and how open it is. And again, we have a lot of metal skid uh, covering in there as well, uh, in addition to being able to buy the HMW uh, skid plate. So from the back end here, we, we, the unit comes standard with no bumper. There's a couple additional bumpers you can add, but we have a very large cargo bed. One of the things we heard on the research was a lot of customers really wanted to carry more cargo and not have it stuffed really up high. So we, 
we made this uh, this cargo well very very large and spacious and there's a lot of functionality built into it so uh, what we have is is up to 300 pound 350 pounds of cargo capacity and you can see how it's got ribbed uh, rib rib things in here and it's also nested down so this is the shape of a cooler uh, you can put a Yeti 60 in here and it'll fit in uh, basically cool. allows it to kind of not move around a lot so once you find whatever cooler or box works for you uh, if you can find it that size it nests in there it doesn't float around we've got four solid d-ring hooks in here you can you can tie whatever you have into the cargo bed uh, so it's very nice from that aspect as well. In addition, um, one thing I can show you, if you want to get full access to your engine, uh, you, have, uh, you have to take these four bolts out, and then you can take these pop rivets out around the side, and this whole plate comes off, and you have full open access. Your engine's underneath. It's a rear mount engine. Uh, you can get access to the engine for serviceability if, if you need to.